Hello, so welcome back. We're going to be doing some of the broken terrain today. This is supposed to be a uh, kind of abandoned temple, so we want to have a lot of broken brick around, and I've created this ready-to-break path prefab to do just that. This is a prefab that is very, very similar to the uh, original... Um, this is a path that is very, very, very similar to the original tile I laid down here, but you can see that it's got lots of cracks in it. And well, all I've really done is I've taken a Blender file and I have added uh, the one texture to all of the pieces and the Mesh Collider. I've also had to make the Mesh Collider convex. But what that means is that when I hit play and the, let the rigid body do its work, you can see that the pieces fragment and break. Now the problem with this, of course, is that when you press stop again, it reverts. And this is uh, something that happens regardless of what you try and do. So what I need to do in order to take advantage of this physics is I need to store this as a new prefab. Like this. So now when I hit stop, this comes back to being the old prefab, but I do have this in memory, see? So what I can do is I can drop this into the ready to break path, and then I can zero out all of these values. Like so. And now I can move this out, and I can move this ready to break path away. And what we have is the exact same physics sim result. Of course, the detail we would like here is uh, we want to turn off all of those physics, all the rigid bodies. So we just remove them all. There you go. And it would be best if we moved this down a little bit to reflect the fact that it is supposed to be, you know, old and sunken into the ground. Now we have the same prefab we started with, and we are trying to get it to uh, continue the path here. So we'll just do the exact same thing. That should work. We'll hit play. Crunch. Yeah, I think that looks fine. So as before, we don't stop. We just pause it, and then we drop the brake here, and then we stop it. And then we have to drop that back into the prefab, zero out the location and rotation and drag it out of the prefab and then we can move the prefab back now this is not the way you would build a path if you were worried about processing power if you were doing something from mobile or something this is a um, this is a method which does produce a lot of individual mesh objects uh, unless you have an option to recombine those mesh objects later uh, you're probably going to be stuck with all of these different mesh objects and if performance is a huge concern, that's obviously not going to be a great idea. Now let's make sure we're not standing in the middle of the crumple zone here. But let's also remember to fix up this ready-to-break path. We need to remove all the physics. And we need to drop the path down. You can see that this overlaps, these two kind of cluster on top of each other here. We also have one that's really tiny. Well, that's interesting. I guess that's fine. I don't really really mind it one way or the other. But let's go ahead and move this guy just so that it doesn't overlap quite so dramatically. There you go. So now those two paths are set and we have one more path to go. Hit play. Let's take a look. Does that look decent? Hmm. I guess it's fine. So pause the game, drop the path into our prefab selection, and then pause it, or un stop it rather, drop the new prefab into the path object, zero it out. And now obviously this is not a very automated way to build paths, and I'm only doing this spe specifically because I want this path to be all broken up. Uh, and then we can just delete this original piece. Uh, this path here, we're going to want to um, remove the rigid bodies and then drop the path down. So now when I hit play, the idea is that we'll have this nice physics system where it, the bricks have fallen into a kind of a broken position and you get the feeling that uh, everything is is old and battered 
Uh, now the best part about doing it this way is when your ground is not flat. So here I've got a lot of flat ground and there are less obnoxious ways to do the flat ground. But up here where it's hilly, you can see that this really just automatically contours to the ground, especially up here where it goes into this uh, little dip. And so I find that this is a really fun way to make debris uh, that looks good when you are trying to build a debris strewn path through rugged terrain. The only thing you have to worry about is that it's very easy to accidentally cause these things to roll down hills and such. So for example, if I put the ready to break path here, I hit play. You can see how we have true debris. Now if true debris is what you want, then this is obviously a fine result. Uh, and to be honest, I think that's kind of nice. I might, I might go ahead and keep that. Um, but uh, if you're looking to get a path, then that's not what you'd want. And if you're looking for just pure debris, like just rocks, it's better not to use something that is that starts as a, as a perfect square and instead use something that's just like rocks. But this does happen to look a lot like shattered stone walls or something similar, uh, so it's kind of suitable for our needs since we are in the middle of a, st a shattered stone environment. Now building this in uh, Blender was kind of annoying because uh, I don't believe there are any easy slice tools in Blender uh, that can create awkward slices. I had to use the cut tool over and over and over and then manually suture the faces up uh, and it took quite a while, um, about 45 minutes and this is not a big object. So I don't recommend that you create these kinds of objects unless you have time on your hands. If you're trying to go fast it's easier to do it some other way. But there we are. So our system is starting to look like it has a little bit of uh, power to it. These debris... Uh, oh, I forgot to remove... Oh, look, I forgot a face. I forgot to remove all of the physics objects. And that forgotten face will probably stay forgotten. Um, and until I get around to remembering it at some point much much later because I don't plan to use this particular set of uh, rocks very often um, it I guess it is visible rather than fix it let's just go ahead and tilt it down so that you can't see it there quote unquote fixed So in the next couple of episodes, we'll continue to build out this uh, environment using other kinds of techniques. Uh, I just wanted to get this one out of the way first because I probably will be using it in the background for some things. Um, I'll probably have some pillars that break and stuff like that. Uh, and I wanted you to not be confused as to how I'd done it. I don't plan to do all of that stuff on screen. There are a lot of downsides to this method, and I'm sure that if you look in the comments, someone is probably talking about some other way to do it. And maybe they're talking about something I haven't heard of. But I find that this method is a very quick and easy way to build debris.